Starting your own practice is hard for many chiropractors. It's riddled with both struggles and successes. But here at the Chiropractic Philanthropist, we make it easy by having chiropreneurs and entrepreneurs share their struggles and lessons learned in life and business so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. And now, here's your host, Dr. Ed Osborne. How amazing would it be if you could practice because you want to, not because you have to? Learn how to improve your cash flow and increase your passive income now. Go to moneyripples.com or find their podcast, The Chris Miles Money Show, to learn more. All right, TCP listeners, we have an incredible guest today, and that is actually Dr. Stephen Noseworthy. Doc, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Uh, I'm amazing, man. I was I love how like we get to start this conversation about uh, before we started recording about RVs and yes, you know. I had a feeling that was going to come up today. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it though. So let's do this. Like, I mean, yep. I've, I've gotten you know had the opportunity to get to know you over the last couple of years, but there's a lot yeah. of docs who don't know Dr. Stephen Noseworthy. Tell us a little bit about you, and then we'll head into uh, some quotes, affirmations, and whatnot. Wow. Yeah. Um, where to start? Not not that there's like so much to talk about, but um, <laughs> probably the salient things. I'm Canadian, as you are. Um, ended up going down to the States in St. Louis, Logan University to become a chiropractor. Changed my life. In fact, there, I mean, there's a backstory there, obviously, because I my undergraduate degree was in business and marketing. And I was working for some advertising agencies in Toronto when uh, really? one of yeah one of the students at at uh, CMCC before they moved campus completely changed my life, and I thought I was what twenty seven years old twenty six years old at the time something like that, and I thought if I if I could change one person's life the way that this guy changed mine I would happily go back to school for four years even though I I thought at the age of twenty seven I was too old to go back to school because <laughs> I, I was going to be thirty one when I graduated and I thought that was just too old and of course that was you know gosh twenty eight point five years ago twenty six years ago something like that wow yeah, yeah so you know it was it was really a personal experience I I had no idea what chiropractic was, was about when I went to see this this intern and, and if you want to get into the backstory i was living and working in toronto up in the young and eglinton area i don't know if you've been there pretty nice to live there yeah awesome and so uh i i was dating one of the personal trainers at the gym where i was working out and i had a, a recurrent neck and shoulder issue that had not resolved even though i'd had surgery for that like a rotator cuff decompression two years before and she said, well, why don't you go see my chiropractor? I'm like, well, what, what can a chiropractor do for shoulders and all that kind of stuff? And so anyways, within three months of seeing an intern at CMCC, uh, I was probably 80% better. And at that time, I, I had given up pretty much all of my athletic pursuits. And the only thing I was doing at the gym was cardio and, you know, like squats, because I couldn't do anything with my upper body at mm. all. So it changed my life, man. Just And, and obviously, when you when you start to learn about chiropractic and what it can do and, and the history of it and the philosophy of it, it's just a whole new way of thinking. It just changed everything for me. And I mean, you've really become someone who's embraced the academ academia that you have mm -hmm. of chiropractic. So the science and not just the art and philosophy. So yeah. like, what was it that drew you to, to being an educator? Um, you know, that's a great idea or a great question. I, I think that I, I didn't know that I was a teacher at heart, to be honest. Mm. Um, and I, I ended up, you know, what I'm, what I do now is functional medicine. I haven't done chiropractic per se for about a decade or so, and um, I, I was just in the right place at the right time. I, I had no designs to, um, number one, transition into functional medicine as a career. I had no designs on becoming a, a speaker that is you know, at this point, nationally, perhaps internationally, no, that was never, ever a plan. Uh, and, and honestly, I just think it was Providence, uh, you know, in the right place at the right time. And maybe there was a grander design of foot that I wasn't aware of that maybe is easier to see when you look back with 2020 hindsight. Yeah, never a plan. It just kind of happened. And, and I love it. I, I just yeah. absolutely love it. Yeah, funny how that happens with life, isn't it? How it's just... Yeah. 
you know, divine happens and here we are. So, sometimes I sometimes I feel like I am like afloat in a in a torrential river and I'm just like, okay, where where are we going now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, you're going with the that's, that's that could be the title of the the episode today is go with the flow. Go with so, the flow. Thank you. I've been doing that for two years or try. Yeah. <laughs> so um I, I love quotes. I haven't heard some mm -hmm. really good quotes for a while. I know you kind of, you, you gave me a little hint as to some of these quotes and affirmations and, and whatnot yeah. before we jumped on. Drop a great quote on us. Well, can I, can I do a couple? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You I, know, the, I the one, the one that I didn't share in, in our little pre-chat was, and I think this was really the first quote as a young person that really kind of spoke to me. And I, I can't remember. It was one of the older philosophers. Can't remember who it was, but said something like, you know, life is hard and it will break you, but then you get stronger in the broken places. And in that, I, I did not even remember what was going on in my life at the time, but that's something that has, that has stuck with me ever since. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, just over the years, you come across kind of the standard ones, like I mentioned to you, a, a thousand mile journey begins with one step. Um, and, and I think that that matches quite well with I think what has become the theme of my life, which is ready, fire, aim. Um, and, and I, again, unknown to myself, turns out that I, I'm the kind of guy that jumps in without knowing what I'm doing, <laughs> which, <laughs> which I, you know, ultimately tends to work out because, you know, what are, whatever it is that you're seeking to master is only mastered in the doing. And, and, and most of the learning is in the doing, not just the kind of the academic sense of sitting back and listening to podcasts or lectures or whatever. It's, it's you know, getting your hands in there and, and doing stuff before you really know what you're doing. That's how you yeah. sort stuff out, at least in my opinion. Yeah. It's mastering the moment, isn't it? Like, like it's really difficult. And this is like one of the things I always experience is, especially when working with clients or other doctors is mitigating expectations of like what's going to happen when they create something or mm -hmm. you know when they start a practice and things don't you know happen overnight at least for the majority of docs it it takes years sometimes to get yeah. those results yeah. and and i love how you say you know the thousand mile journey begins with one step and it is one step but you got to keep stepping right yeah, that's right there's always another one <laughs> it's not just the one step i yeah. love it yeah so th very relevant yeah i yeah. love it and, you know, I, I always ask is like, I talk about the shit sandwich, right? It's like, we've all eaten the shit sandwich, whether it's in life or whether it's in practice business, you know, what, when's been a time that you've experienced some real struggle in your life or business. And, you know, what was it that le you learned, you gathered from that and how you apply it to your life and business today? I would say that, the, I mean, you know, I just turned 58. So by the time you get our, you know, you've had a lot of shit sandwiches over the years. <laughs> um, I would say the one that had, that was the most significant and affected me both personally and professionally was back when the economy tanked in 2008 ish, 2000, yeah, 2008. Yeah. And, um, when I moved from St. Louis, cause I stayed in St. Louis, um, for a couple of years after I graduated. And ended up moving down and joining a practice in the Sarasota, Bradenton area in Florida. And we went from being, you know, just me and the guy who owned the practice. We ended up hiring a medical doctor and integrating. And by the time I left 10 years later, we had a staff of maybe eight or nine clinicians and you know, almost 30 different support staff and all this kind of stuff. And um, I went out on my own which is itself a whole different backstory. And, you know, with construction delays, it already had a spot picked out and we had construction plans and a build out and there was delay after delay. And it was a full mm -hmm. year before we actually opened our doors. And, and at that point, uh, I was doing brain-based spinal rehab with my mm -hmm. neurology background. And I was just starting to get into the functional medicine stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, what ended up happening was in... The, the first nine months that we were actually open, you know, we got to the point where we were covering overhead. And I, honestly, I don't know if that's a good time frame or not, but it <laughs> felt good at the time. Yeah. But this was in the fall of 2008 and um, everything changed in a two week period. 
Mm. I mean, it just, everything just disappeared. And, and when it really struck me and, and I know that there are people out there who will kind of identify with this and, and I, I hope they don't, but I got up one day to go to work and I walked outside. I was driving a Yukon XL at the time and I walked outside and it wasn't there. And my first thought was, holy crap, someone stole my truck. And then I stood there for a second and slowly it dawned on me that that vehicle had been repossessed in the middle of the night. Wow. And then there was like, you know, the guilt and the shame and all this, but, but it was all a consequence of, you know, the economic damage. And I don't know what it was like where you are, but you know, in, in that first year or so after everything crashed, um, you couldn't drive down a street in Florida in any of the cities that I had gone to without seeing maybe every third house empty or up for sale or repossessed. Wow. It was insane. Absolutely insane. I remember that time. Yeah. And so that was, that was devastating, um, you know, financially, like we literally lost everything except, uh, an old minivan and, um, the clothes on our back. Wow. And, um, we, we had five kids at home at the time. And you sit around and you start to doubt yourself as, as a husband, a father and a provider. And, and, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's like, this affected me, not just on a professional level, but personally. And, and I know that there are people that can go through this, that can kind of weather the storm and, and not give in to that self-recrimination. But unfortunately, I wasn't one of them. It took me yeah. several years to kind of get my head straight to get back in the game. But one of the things that came out of that to kind of bring things full circle was that it it really gave me an opportunity to think hard about the kind of practice that I wanted mm. and then the direction that I wanted to go in, in terms of you know my career and my profession. And that's where I transitioned into doing mostly chiropractic with a little bit of functional medicine into doing nothing but functional medicine. And there was a, a very short transition period where, you know, I had rented a, a local office space that I could be in like two days a week and I would carry my my portable table in with me and adjust a couple of people and do some funk med consults and it was kind of a mixture and then eventually i just kind of pulled the plug and and then ended up doing uh functional medicine virtually out of my house uh, that's that's how things started and yeah obviously that's been a transition as well and i'm sure the rv thing will come up again in conversation but <laughs> you know that was that was a very defining era for me. I, I'm not going to say moment because it was, it, it was the moment of realization when the truck got repossessed of what was going on. And of course, you know, it's coming, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's coming, but you just don't know when. And so that moment hit me and just kind of like spun me around, rattled me in every way conceivable. Um, and thankfully I came out of it stronger, you know, like that quote, life breaks you, but then you get stronger in the broken places. And, and that's really why I thought, well, maybe I just need to talk about that quote because that that really kind of speaks to me very deep. How would Seth Godin, Gary Vaynerchuk, and Tim Ferriss create a chiropractic practice? The answer is The Payday Practice, a new book by Dr. Jeff Langmaid and Dr. Jason Deitch. The Payday Practice is the perfect solution for any chiropractic practice looking to generate monthly recurring revenue. This book provides a step-by-step -step process that is easy to follow and guaranteed to get results. Get your free copy today at thepaydaypractice.com. Don't wait, this offer won't last forever. The Payday Practice, recurring practice revenue the easy way. Head over to thepaydaypractice.com for your free copy now. I think there's a lot of people who can resonate with that story as well. Like, I mean, at some point, I, I think, you know, whether it's, you know, with your health or whether it's financial mm -hmm. or, you know, we all kind of get, the universe kicks us in the nads and it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, I call it the, the great reset. This is the great reset in your the life or your business. Yeah. 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 Well, you and I know, I know enough about your story to know that you've, you've had, you know, those health challenges and as they well. keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I keep getting resets every three years. It's like a <laughs> it's pattern. Like, thank, thank you. Yeah. May I have another? Yeah. The, the, the universe <laughs> slaps you upside the head and says, stupid, get it. You know, yeah. you need to do that. You need to follow your values and your core values. And yeah. yeah. So I love this conversation though, because let's talk about the RV. I mean, you're in the RV right now. Where are mm -hmm. you right now? We're in Newfoundland. So you're in Newfoundland. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. So you're in Newfoundland. You're in the RV. Are you full-time in the RV? Is this, is this yeah. like your home? 
Okay. Yeah. So you- and in fact, what is it today? Today's the 20 in five days will have been full time for exactly two years. Wow. I love we that. hit the road. We hit the road September 26th, 2020. Um, and we left from, we bought the army in South Carolina. We were living in South Carolina at the time. And we, we actually ended up selling property. We sold everything. Yeah. The only thing we own right now is the RV, the truck, and I have a handful of things in storage in a in Simpsonville, South Carolina, which is the area that we were living in at the time. And so we we're just we're not we're unanchored and untethered, which is a, an amazing feeling, to be honest. Yeah. What is it? What what is like the one thing you love most about it? The freedom to go anywhere we want, anytime we want. Yeah like anywhere right anywhere anywhere and we've like we've gone in two years we've logged over forty thousand miles now we've been here in newfoundland since the middle of june about the 20th because i've got you know my dad is still here my sister Mm -hmm. and her husband and her kids are still here and when we were in florida and the kids were growing up um it was just too difficult and time consuming and expensive to go back a lot so we only came back about every four years and um my dad's getting up there. He's 85 years old and he's in <laughs> relatively good health. But, you know, I, I realized at some point, I don't know how many years I have left because we lost my mom. Mm. I don't know how deep down this hole you want to go. But the reason why we bought the RV ad was we had been watching YouTube channels for probably six months to a year about the RV lifestyle. And, and we wow. had planned on buying, this was 2020. We had planned on buying an RV probably January of 2021. and what ended up happening was we lost my mother-in-law and my mother within six weeks of each other, both to cancer. Mm. And, uh, and my mom, between when my mother-in-law passed in Florida and when my mom passed in Canada, um, you know, my dad, and of course my mom, we knew that she'd been dealing with cancer for a while. And so we, I got a call from my dad. It was a Wednesday night. And he said, we just got back from the specialist and and they say she's got weeks to months to live. Of course, you hear that and your brain goes, "Okay, months, we've got months. And so. That was Wednesday. Within three days, I had traded my truck in. I had a a Ram 1500, bought a 2500 diesel and we had bought an RV. We've never owned an RV before. So mm-hmm. that was Wednesday and Saturday afternoon we hit the road and our very first RV trip was 2,500 miles. Oh my God. <laughs> and there's like, I'm telling you, there's like crazy stories in there in, in the first. And we thought like on day two of the trip, I thought we had made a horrible mistake, oh, no. an absolutely horrible mistake. And it involved the, the Jersey Turnpike and being dumped out into downtown Baltimore, towing a 36 oh foot RV. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you, it was just insane. But, you know, by the time we, once we got on the other side of that, um, everything sorted out and, and, you know, I'm sad to say we actually missed my mom's passing, like quite literally by three minutes, three to five minutes by the time we actually got to the house. But, you know, we, we sat back and, and, um, we just kind of started considering like so far we have had a couple of bad experiences, but a lot of really good ones. And we saw the potential and, and because I already had a virtual practice. Yeah. And split my time between my own functional medicine practicing, you know, doing a little bit of consulting and helping other docs get set up. And then um, the speaking engagements that I had, I'm like, like, we don't have to be in one place. Right. And so right now we spend about half the year here in Canada with my family. And then the other half of the year, we spend bouncing around, seeing our kids and our grandkids. And every once in a while, we get time to ourselves and we'll go explore a place. <laughs> we told the kids like in 2024, because we've already got things planned out or everyone has planned out for us. We have to be in different places because we have kids in five different states or four wow. states and one is here in Canada. And so we're like, you know, at some point we need some time to ourselves. And so we're going to push west of Texas, which is the furthest west that we've gone, hit the Grand Canyon, head north. Nice. And eventually we're going to be up in your neck of the woods. So oh, you might- have to. Yeah, you might see me knocking on your door one of these days. <laughs> it might be a, a, it might be a couple of years, but I'll get a campsite next to you. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm I'm new to the RV life, and you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, if if anyone who's interested or has these things, it's a B class, and 
it was spurt of the moment, but when I saw it and, you know, part, one of my highest values is uh, travel, but also exploration. Mm -hmm. I'm just not as big on travel lately. Like getting on a plane is, is yeah. painful at times now, especially with all the yeah. crap that was going on over the last couple sure. of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, yeah, I, I can jump in this thing. It's complete like and dry camp anywhere. It's great. Yes. However, yeah. not so great if you have a bunch of kids and a dog, which now I have like pretty yeah. much all, all, like a lot of time. So I'm looking at doing what you're doing. Get the, get the truck and get the big yeah. RV and yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I and we're, lifestyle. you know, at this point we're empty nesters and, and, mm -hmm. you know, we started making changes when our last kid graduated high school in 2019 is when we moved from Tampa, like mm -hmm. North Tampa to South Carolina. And we, we had property in a place up there that we went to for a few months in the summers, typically anyways. And again, I could do that because I had a virtual practice and we just, we just weren't feeling it. I mean, we loved it as a mm -hmm. summer place, but we just weren't feeling it as like our forever home. And um, so, you know, when we decided to let go of it, it really wasn't that big of a deal. Like we, yeah. we didn't think we were making a mistake. Um, what we were focused on was all, all the potential and all the possibilities that had opened up to us by making that choice. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, technically we're still, our domicile, if you will, is still Florida. My practice, my license is in Florida. Um, but I don't know. I, I can be anywhere. That's the coolest thing. And, you, <laughs> I, and I know that you've experienced that. And the whole concept of, you know, like the laptop lifestyle is all based around, you know, being able to run your business. All you need is a laptop and you can yeah. be and go anywhere that you want. Now, we haven't haven't made it to Belize and any of those places, but, <laughs> you know, we decided that there were so many places in North America to explore yes. places that we've never been. And, um, you know, why not start there? You know, start with what's easily available. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just been a great adventure and, and we don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Well, you know, clearly I meet a lot of doctors who, who love the idea of virtual or mm -hmm. I call it like, so there's two ways they might do it. Number one is full-time virtual exit strategy, freedom, autonomy. And the other is really like a bolt on it's a bolt on to what they're already doing. They just yep. want to have more growth and experience helping more yes. people. They just don't want to be in their practice all the time. Yeah. So, um, I hear this all the time, but for the docs who actually want to see and experience someone who's doing it, I'm going to just drop here. So you can actually follow um, Dr. Stephen Noseworthy on Facebook. So go ahead and just go to the search bar. He's not hard to find. Um, Instagram as well. And then also you have a podcast. So let's talk about the podcast. It's, sure. It's Inflammation Nation. I mean, mm -hmm. it's 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 a B2C. Like it's, it's for um, the public, yep. but you've been podcasting for some time. I love the name. And, uh, how, how, um, how, have, how have you found the experience of creating a podcast and getting your voice out there? Yeah. So, well, you know, first of all, hats off to you because you're the one who said, Hey, podcasting is coming back. <laughs> it's always um, been here, I think, but yeah. Yeah, I, I guess. And, and maybe just what, what you're attuned to, but I, you know, it was, it, again, it was one of those things of the, the ready fire aim. Did I feel qualified to do a podcast? Heck no. Even though I've spent over a decade now, like some of the seminars that I teach in functional medicine are three days long. And so wow. like speaking is not an issue, right? I, I mean, I can fill up time easily, but there's, you know, just there's this hesitation, especially when it involves technology in a different media. And, uh, you know, you and I have interacted fairly frequently over the last couple of years and, and you know, I've been blessed to be coached by you in different oh, aspects. Thank and thank you. I mean, you, you've had a good influence on me. You really have. Mm. And, um, and so I just kept hearing what you were saying. And, and, um, you know, there was at one point that I was like, uh, I mean, I have to do something and this kind of, <laughs> kind of fits me. And I know part of your process is like, not just finding your voice, but finding the avenue that kind of fits mm. your skill set. And I, and, uh, you know, you have a specific term for that. Um, and so I thought, well, it kind of makes sense because I'm used to talking and all I need, I can do it anywhere. I can do it on yeah. the road. I can do it. In fact, I just published two podcasts while I was in San Francisco this past weekend, sitting in my hotel room, recording on these crappy <laughs> little speakers, but so you know, nevertheless, I was able to do it. It was just crazy. And so, you know, I followed some of the advice that you had given me. And, and at the end of last year, I, I like furiously recorded 
30 podcast episodes. And, you know, I tried to keep them from, you know, eight to 10 minutes. Most of them were. Um, and so I had 30 podcasts in the bank when I launched. It was probably December 26th or 27th. Let's call it January 1st. Yeah. So the podcast has been up and running now since the beginning of January this year. And, you know, we're right now approaching something like 17,000 downloads. Wow. Um, and averaging, like if you average the number of episodes uh, over the number of downloads, we're, you know, something like 215 downloads per episode. And, and yeah. so it's small. I mean, it's not a massive uh, podcast by any stretch of the ima imagination, but what has been fun uh, is not just the process of, you know, producing the episodes, which by the way, if anyone is interested is a lot easier than you think. <laughs> it's it's just easier. a lot easier than you think. Yeah. And, um, you know, just kind of watching the stats grow because I can remember first looking at statistics going like, okay, I've got maybe 20 downloads per episode. Yeah. And now we're 10 X that. And and we haven't been, I haven't been on the air for even a year yet. Right. It hasn't been a year. And, and so, and, and what I've seen is it's kind of cumulative and it, and it, and it accelerates kind of ex exponentially. And, um, and you'll be interested in this part, just from a, like a coaching standpoint, I've started to notice um, I'm getting more people calling me, you know, to become one-on-one -on -one coaching clients with health issues mm. who have found me on the podcast. Yeah, great. And, and so and so the small monthly investment I pay for the podcast hosting hails in comparison to the income that I've generated just in the past two months. Wow. From having that podcast. And so it's to be honest, I think it's it's turned out more for me than anything I've ever done in social media or even in, certainly in traditional advertising. And I, and I know that every year that's just going to get better. Well, it's beautiful, too, because it's like evergreen. Right. I mean, it's, yeah. they don't go away. They, they're, you know, someone finds your podcast and they start binging on them, but I, yeah. I hate, I, I'm not going to, I probably shouldn't say this, but I had someone <laughs> who was a former client worked with us, launched her podcast and she was a monster, but I got a message from her the other week and she had published over a thousand episodes, like literally one a day for like a couple of years. My goodness. All, I know. And all, but all of a sudden it, and it was just like a click, like things changed and shifted. Yeah. Where now all of a sudden she was getting like five, 6,000 listens a day, mm -hmm. a day. Just yeah. now it's not that way. Like I'm, I'm 380, maybe getting close to 400 episodes in. So I get a lot of listens as well. Very small market, but yep. it does kind of switch. It's so like, there's like that 30 or the 40, or sometimes it's 50 for people episodes in. And then I think everything just shifts and there a couple thousand people listen to them a day. It's very, very powerful. Yeah. And, you know, let me, let me say this again, for anyone who might be considering doing something like podcasting is that it, when you go in and you look at your statistics, like I, I started to look at this as a way to test the market, you know, for concepts. And so, you know, every episode, I have a tendency to do kind of mini series. I might spend seven or eight mm -hmm. episodes on idea. one topic. Yeah. And, and it seems to have worked out. And so there, you know, I'm not, it, it relieves me of the burden of trying to find like, one-off topics all the time, <laughs> which I think would be more challenging to be honest. But, um, you know, you go back and you look at your stats and you see which topics have the highest downloads and, and get the most attention. And then it starts to shift. Okay. Now I start to understand what this market wants. And now I'm, I'm at the point where I'm starting to kind of massage my content to match what seems to be popular and, and what they're speaking back to me is, hey, this is what we're interested in. And that's been a great learning experience, to be honest, because you sit back and I mean, you're in your own echo chamber and you think, wow, I have this great idea. This is going to blow up. And it doesn't. <laughs> you know, and maybe it's the delivery, maybe it's the content, but sometimes I think it's just simply, you know, we're kind of deaf to, to what the market wants. And this yeah. is a great way to test out those ideas. Do you, do you, do you do video and audio or mostly just audio? I, well, I record everything with video and then I just rip the audio off that okay. and upload that through Libsyn. Um, and, you know, thankfully Libsyn kind of takes care of sending it out to different social. Yeah. To the channels. Um, yeah. It does go to YouTube and I've got a hand, you know, several dozen, maybe close to a hundred people on YouTube, but I don't have the video up on 
Um, and, and I kind of go back and forth between, I, I know that they are YouTube right now is trying to increase their presence in the podcast space. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know a lot of people just put on YouTube and they listen, but they don't watch the video. And you know, it was just me. I mean, it's not like I have graphics and slides to show people. They're just <laughs> looking at me. Like, yeah. Why do you, why do you want to look at me? You can just listen to me. I mean, you don't need to look at this mug all the time, but yeah. So I don't know if you have any advice on that. I mean, I can easily upload the the video portion too, but well, I mean, video is everything's going video. I mean, not, we just TikTok, you know, yeah, Instagram reels. I mean, I drop yeah. a Instagram reel, I get 13, 14,000. Seven, I, I checked one today, it was like 70,000 views. So, it's if you can get your message across in 30 seconds, it's a good yeah. place to be. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, however, sure. it, if, if someone wants to show me how you can actually monetize that. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be interested to know. I can show you how to, how to get lots of people watching, but monetization, mm, a little bit different. Yeah. yeah. So I, I love this conversation. I mean, like it's really feels like you've gone through these, this, this massive evolution in your life, mm-hmm. like to, to this point of where you have this freedom and you're able to kind of move your, your very mobile. But if you, you know, if I take you and put you into the TCP time machine, so if I sent you back to a younger version of yourself, say, yeah, like right around what, when you came out of school, was it 31, you said, chiropractic college around yeah. that time. And, you know, what would be the best advice that you would give that younger self? Can I, can I answer that with a short story? Sure. Yeah. So my very first functional medicine patient was I, I actually didn't have the office open yet. You know, we we had this anticipate, this is when I transitioned out of the group practice and went solo. And um, I had been writing articles for a local alternative health magazine. And I was getting phone calls and I had a list of maybe, I don't know, 15 or so people who were waiting for me to open up. And so this lady called and said, I, I need to come see you. And I've said, oh, gosh, I'm like, I'm so sorry. Our office isn't open yet. Or we're supposed to be open in like eight weeks or something. And she said, I can't wait that long. I'll come to your house. And I said, no, no, you won't. <laughs> and she said, well, you can come to my house. I'm like, no, that's not going to work either. She said, I will meet you anywhere. And I thought, OK, well, why don't we meet at Starbucks? And she said, fine, where and when? So a couple of days later, I drive to Starbucks and I've got my briefcase. I've got like saliva and stool test kits. I've got lab requisitions. I don't know what I'm doing, right? I, yeah. This is my first client. <laughs> and so she bought me coffee and we sat and talked for about an hour. And at the end of the conversation, I'm like, okay, I think here's what we need to do. Let's get these labs. And I pull out a requisition and I'm filling it out at the table. And as I was thinking through what I wanted to do with her, she kind of leans in and she says, how much do I owe you? And I hadn't thought that far ahead. And I said the first number that popped into my head, which if I remember, was like $275 or something like that. She pulls out a checkbook and she writes me a check. (laughs) And that moment made me realize, and this, this is what I would tell my younger self, your practice can be anything you want it to be. Don't Don't buy into this idea that you have to have a brick and mortar. If that's what you want, fine. But just because that's what you've been trained to think doesn't mean that that is true. Now, obviously, this applies to me in a service that you can deliver virtually, right? That you can't do a virtual adjustment. Although some people might argue you can, but I'm not sure. (laughs) Not sure that I believe that. But yeah, I would say your practice can be anything, anything that you want it to be. You just need to be clear on what it is you want. I agree. I agree. I mean, and you know, there's lots of docs who are like you or like me, and maybe we're not as, you know, the, not there's, there's less of us, but there's a lot of docs out there who can help a lot of people by doing what we're doing. So podcasting videos, you know, virtual um, practice. So Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of people who need help that can't get into an office, like you said. So I, I love that. I love that. Um, if you were to say, like, if you, you know, um, had someone that you look up to, an expert, um, like, who are you following right now? Whether it's, it could be, you know, coaching in, in your life coaching, it could be, you know, in mm-hmm. business coaching, it could be Tony Robbins, I don't know, like, who, yeah. who, do you look up? who, do, who does doctor knows where they look up to? Well, I mean, on in terms of social media and that kind of presence, um, 
I follow a handful of people and and really I don't think there's anyone that stands out. I will tell you and and I'm I'm I really I'm not blowing smoke up your butt. I followed you for years before oh. I eventually reached out to you. I would see these, you know, the ads that you would put out and you were dressed in the cool guy clothes with the pose. And I'm like, who is this guy? And it was like the whole laptop lifestyle, which was where my brain was starting to go. And, and so, you know, I eventually reached out to you a couple of years ago and, and you've helped me quite a bit. Um, in terms of other people, like I can't say that I, I follow a lot of social media influencers, yeah. but I mean, if I think professionally, um, certainly the, the guy that I teach for when I teach functional medicine, um, his name's Detis Karazian. He's okay. a chiropractor that went to Life West, um, could have been LACC. I'm, I might be wrong on that, but he um, he started in the AK world and uh, started functional medicine. And a couple of years ago, he became Harvard Medical School's researcher of the year, wow. first chiropractor ever to be invited to that program. And then he was awarded their, their top award. And so I teach his material. Now I teach my understanding and my version of that. And uh, he was the guy that I just met again, by happenstance, and that's a different story. And I know we're running out of time, but um, I was brought into his life. He was brought into my life, however you want to look at it. And it changed everything. And and his influence continues to resonate with me because it's influenced how I think clinically. It's influenced how I practice. Um, and of course, I continue to teach for him. I was just in San Francisco, taught a weekend seminar to about 45 docs out there, which by the way, is a heck of a long flight from St. John's to San yeah. Francisco. It was like 3,500 miles one way. It was oh my 12 gosh. to 13 hours of travel. It, it was, you know, it was a grueling weekend. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I would say like where I am right now, you've had a great influence and, and Detis is probably the other side of that. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And is there anything like right now that you think that anyone doc who's listening should go, they should seek out? So it could be a book, could be an app, could be software. I mean. What, what do you think docs should go and kind of like consume right now? Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm a big believer that everything flows from your mindset and your thought mm -hmm. process. And I would say that the, the book that has had the greatest influence on me is by John Maxwell. And he's a, you know, he's been a motivational and leadership speaker. If you've ever heard of the book, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. He's the guy who wrote that. But he wrote a book called Failing Forward. Hmm. many years ago. And I read it many years ago. And the whole concept of the book is there's no such thing as failure, only feedback. Hmm. And that, that was really helpful for me, you know, going back to the story of having lost everything in, in the economy crash, because I take things so personally. And, and in fact, the guy that I worked and practiced with and worked for for 10 years when I first moved to Florida he ended up losing everything about two years after I left the practice as part of this whole economic downturn. And we met for breakfast one day just to kind of clear some ear, some things that were still hanging out between us. And I asked him how it, how it affected him to lose everything. And he said, yeah, I was just dumping debt. <laughs> and he just like, he could turn around and walk away, but I, I I'm not wired that way. And right. so to hear a message from, from someone like fail forward, it's only feedback. It's not really failure. You know, like Edison said, um, you know, I've successfully figured out 10,000 ways not to build a light bulb. <laughs> and yeah. it was the 10, 10,000 and one, if that's even a word, uh, iteration that worked. And and so I've tried to adopt that because I've, I've tried and failed at so many different things, whether that is business ideas, like separate businesses, or even just when the, within the confines of our profession marketing strategies, advertising strategies, mm -hmm. clinical strategies. I mean, some stuff works and stick or stick works and sticks, but there's so much that we do in so many different domains in our life that, you know, you got to swing at that ball more than once to knock it out of the park. Yeah. And, and so I, I, I would say that failing forward, that that's a wonderful book to read. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. So listeners, you can actually head to the chiropractic philanthropist.com. We'll have a webpage dedicated to our discussion with Dr. Noseworthy today, but doc, I want to thank you so much for being on the show and, you know, 
incredible discussion. Um, I love the honesty, the truth that's, that's <laughs> resonating, emitting yeah. here. This is I love when we have real conversations, super authentic. So thank you so much for giving back today. Thank you, Ed. I appreciate it. Appreciate you having me on. So you've heard the struggles, you've heard the successes, and this episode is done. But there's still so much more to come and so much more to learn. Head on over to the chiropracticphilanthropist.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive free practice building tips and strategies, including how to market your practice with your very own podcast and so much more. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on the Chiropractic Philanthropist.